Can you believe it? Shock horror. Spurs spend money on player. Yes. It, uh, it could be happening. So there's only one person we can talk to. <laughs> that man, Flav, back on the Wall Street channel. Uh, hello, mate. How are you? I'm really good. What's how up? are you? Yeah, he's, you, but your background looks nice. Um, Been up to much? Been up to much? Not really. Busy. Mm. Got a nice Hendrix, lovely Glen Fiddich. Right. <laughs> Valentine's not so good. That's a blended whiskey. You don't really need to worry, right. worry about that. Not a sponsored video. Drink responsibly, all that, all that stuff, innit? Yeah, I'm sure you've been drinking responsibly throughout, right, Flav? Mm, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you're probably celebrating. Great link, James. Well, well no, I'm not celebrating, Jim. There's nothing yet. Nothing's happened. Anything can go uh, wrong. Oh, okay. There's you know that... how many times? You know how many times we've been close to signing a player? <laughs> Willian, right? Supposed to sign in, went to Chelsea. Yeah. Others, Others as well. Rivaldo, that's always the one, isn't it? Rivaldo wrote us a letter to apologise why he didn't sign. What a big <laughs> Really? He probably yeah, didn't so, write it. He probably just signed it at the bottom. Um, as far as we know, yeah, it's, it's as close as it can be. So, I won't celebrate until I see him holding up the uh, replica shirt. Well, yeah, OK, let's do emotions first then. So, uh, Tango and Dombele. It looks like this is quite cheap as well. From everything I've... So I've done, you know, I've done my research and looked up on, on what he can do, and you look at all the videos, and he looks like the greatest player you've ever seen, ever. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk about that in a sec. But the, just the just the idea of signing a footballer for Spurs, that's like, I because I know we've had this conversation a few times, and you're like, it doesn't, you know, it's not all about the money, blah 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 blah. You've been gasping for a transfer for so long, haven't you? You've got to be delighted. Yeah, in terms of progress. I don't think transfers as, are as important as people think they are. Mm. Um, Spurs have managed to get over the line and get what, what, what we needed to achieve without playing brilliant football because of the kind of the lack of um, freshness in the squad and lack of numbers. But we've not really regressed in any great way. We're slightly less better than we were two year, years ago, I, I would say. So, you know, signing players isn't that important and signing any players you know, it's definitely not important. And I think a lot of fans last year would have been happy if we'd have sold free and got new, three new players in and not improved the squad. But because we're in a position where we couldn't improve because we had to spend vast amounts of money to, to improve, yeah. you know, you just have to make do with what you've got. And I think we've paved the way, really, of, of, of showing that you can still compete, providing you have a very good basis of quality there in the first place. Uh, you can still compete without going big in the transfer market. That said... It's been so boring. It's been so like I love my I love Tottenham players here. Yeah, I love them all. I love Deli Ali, Harry Kane, right? But after a while, he's like, "Well, I've seen him do that. I've seen Harry Kane score that trick. I've seen it." Yeah. I want to see someone else come in and do it. It is so funny, isn't it? You kind of uh, you know, QPR have had the same thing. QPR just signed a, a Spurs player and loan, and uh, it, it does give you that little spring. That little yeah. spring. It's so. It's like a little gift, isn't it? It's like a Christmas present or yeah. birthday present. Like, and if you're not getting any, even if your life's still great, you're still a yeah. bit gutted that you haven't been able to have, be given a present. All fans of all hunting. football clubs always want more. They yeah. always want the next signing. They always want the next level of achievement. But being a football fan, often, in the, and I would actually say that's reserved for the vast majority, the vast majority of those reserved for top six, top, top ten Premier League sides where they kind of feel like they deserve more and everyone else just wants to support their football club. But you get kind of a very entitled fans of mm. toxic clubs because they chose to support a really good football club. Yeah, Not yeah. me. My dad told me to, but that's besides the point. You know, the, the, it's a, it's a natural thing, a human thing to to want new things. So and, do you not think that? Sorry, finish your point. That was it. It's rubbish. Okay. Uh, so do you, do you not think that you kind of? <laughs> got away with it a little bit last season, just in terms of how stretched the, the squad was. Like, going into this summer, is the aim... I think there was a general understanding that you would spend a little bit of money that you needed someone in, but is it the same feeling that it's about they have to be amazing, or do, do, you, still, do you feel like you need some numbers? Um, both, really. We need cover. We need, yeah, we need depth. Um, and, like, signing three or four would be the correct amount. I think right. uh, players that have been linked to uh, Jack Clark uh, to Leeds, which is pretty much done. That looks like it's done, yeah. But in true Spurs fashion, our first signing in two years has been sent away again on loan, so he's going to go back to Leeds on loan. Um, so <laughs> uh, there, he's there you know, if you need him. He's there. He's there, if, oh, he's there he's, if you no, need him. He's long loan, so he's not there if you need him. He yeah. won't be there till next year, regardless of how much we need him. Uh, and Dombele, 
Lacelso, the guy from Betis, who's also going to cost him a similar, you know, 60, 70 mil. And, um, and the Sessignon brothers. Now, Ryan Sessignon's ready because, yeah. you know, he's played in the Premier League and with better players around him, you know, he's, he'll, he, I think he'll do a good job at Tottenham. Yeah. He's an exciting player. His brother, less so, but we do need to cover him right back. Um, but yeah, so it's a little bit of the same, like numbers, but also just quality. And you, everyone, you look, you've seen and them play play, or, or, or I'm, and I'm not going by the YouTube kind of clips, mm. but you can gauge the style of play, rather not not his quality, but the style of play of the player. And he looks like the kind of you know someone that will improve our squad. Our central midfield is a massive issue. You know, if we hadn't had Sissoko last season, somehow pulled his form out the bag, God knows we would have finished eighth, ninth. Um, and so we have got away with it. To answer your question, we have got away with it somewhat. Yeah. Um, the, the, the Guardian was saying here. So, so what Spurs will get is a player to quicken the pulse, a central yeah. midfielder to replace Moussa Dembélé, and yeah. who mixes skill and electric dribbling with raw power. That sounds decent. <laughs> um, I did. Yeah. I, I looked at his stats as well. Not many goals. Not many goals from him. But I guess Dembele didn't score a huge amount of goals. So no. do you see him as a? Are you hoping that he can be an upgrade on Dembele or just a just that like for like replacement? Or can well, he get better than Dembele? What in his prime? He um, and Dembele was an incredible player. Like underrated in the extreme, I think he only got the recognition towards the end. And Dombele, who uh, has a very similar playing style, his ability to carry uh, his strength, um, break the line in midfield. Great feet, yeah. Yeah, uh, great, yeah, great feet. Like like Dembele's was. So there will be there will be a role for him that was similar to uh, uh, um, similar to Dombele. Sorry, Dembele. Yeah, he's checking it. Yeah, so the, um, uh, but Dembele would bag bag three, four goals a season. Top Luka Modric when he was at Tottenham were, would do the same, but he wasn't there for that. He was he, he's there to control that midfield and win the midfield. And I know it's a cliche, but so many games are won in midfield. And if you've got a player that's difficult to get off the ball that co- that creates gaps and causes mistakes in the or overcommitment in the in the opposition midfield, and then has the skill to break that line, it's very it's a very dangerous um, dangerous player you have on your hands. So. Um, yeah, he will do Dembélé's role, but he also, because of his pace and his passing ability, Dembélé's passing ability was it's easily his wing, weakest link. It was he'd carry, he'd lay it off. Whereas Dembélé has um, a good eye, uh, great passing range, and, and a good finishing ability as well when he gets into that position. But it, it would very much be that link from the defence to the attack rather than popping up with goals. I'd imagine. Yeah, the two uh, things I saw were that. Uh, Apparently, the, and, and it then made me think about the Fred signing at Man United because and there was a lot of talk in the, in the bits and pieces that I was reading saying how he was really great against Man City earlier in the season. You remember Leon beat Man City in the Champions League group stage and he was particularly impressive against Man City's press. He was, and there were a few clips of it as well which, and he was able to just dribble out of those difficult, difficult areas which I think could be a really... Uh, impressive thing to have in your team and again something that you've probably lost since Dembele has not been in the team and then the mm. other thing that it was saying is that his flexibility in terms of where he can play because he's he does sound amazing <laughs> he sounds like he can play in like your favorite phrase in the double pivot he can play in either of those side uh, positions uh, and he's done well there as well yeah exactly he can play in a three-man field as uh, midfield as well and in the the t- I think it was Riem the team that he was in before uh, Leon, he played out wide. He played almost as like a, a right winger in the, in the front three. So mm. he's like, he sounds, he really does sound like the the real deal. But I swear I heard this same thing with with Fred. I, I think I, you got to trust Pochettino when he's desperate to sign someone, though. Don't you think? What? No, you don't. You don't have to trust Pochettino in the transfer market. He made some horrendous transfers. So no, there's no guarantee. He's yeah. made any transfers, has he? Yeah, Vincent Janssen. Oh, um, okay. Sissoko for two years, although it came good. And then, yeah, uh, yeah. So look, I, I don't know how much of that is actually Pochettino and was Paul Mitchell before him, who was our head scout. Um, since Mitchell's gone, we haven't really made any purchases at all. Serge Aurier was a good good signing. Um, sorry, not him. He was shit. He is shit. Lucas Moura, I was thinking. Sorry. Um, so look, it, there's no guarantee he's going to be a good play, good player, and, he, and it's going to turn up for him. But 
he has all of the attributes in order to make it in the Premier League, I think, just just given the way he plays. I think, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited by it, but I'm by no means guaranteed that this guy's going to uh, drag us through to the Premier League title. But, you know, if you're spending that amount of money and Levy's spending that amount of money, they must have been convinced. And, you know, he's had a weird rise to, yeah. to his position. It's not like he's sort of came through the academy at Lyon you know, he was started in the third division in France and had a good season, then moved up one, had a good season, then eventually signed one. And he's made that step up as well. This will be the next one. And, you know, if he's done it three times before, albeit in his home country, then why can't he do it at Tottenham as well? Yeah. Last thing, uh, often when a, a player comes in, if this all gets done, and so it looks like it's going to get done for 55 million, uh, 55 million quid, um, plus 10 millions worth in, in add-ons, which sounds about right for someone with the potential that he's got and who's also a 22-year-old who you're going to be able to sell on in a few years if it doesn't all, all work out. But often when these transfers happen, there's a bit of a, a ripple effect, generally. Mm. Um, how would a player like him coming into the team and starting in the team, how does that affect the careers or the, uh, the Spurs careers of... Well, there's Ericsson, Ali, Sissoko and Winks. I know it's a big, big question for all of them. But is there, who, who gets pushed out in your, in your perfect Spurs eleven now? Well, I think actually that the signing of Ndombele would enable us to perform, create play in different formations. So we've been forced to play in this narrow diamond, which has worked well, you know. But it would enable us to play in a similar fashion to Liverpool, how Man City play when they play 4-3-3. You know, he would, he would give us that ability in midfield to do it so a midfield of Winks, Sissoko and uh, Ndombele would be my most probably be our strongest midfield yeah. but then that does pose the question of who you play up front because Deli Ali can't play as a part of the front three in my opinion he has to play a 10 and um, if you're playing 4 3 you generally don't have a 10 so you know you have the, the, the striker that drops down into the, that, that position um, so uh, I, I think it will give us options rather than anyone having to, to not play or, or be affected by it. Um, all of those players played too many games last year. Yeah. Soko played you know, every minute until he was injured and even tried to run off injuries just to carry on playing. Uh, he, I, we saw him once the last season, he tried to run off a hamstring. Every fan's got that player who did that. Gareth Ainsworth tried to run off a broken leg. <laughs> 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 and played yeah. for about three or four minutes. Absolutely legend. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, it depends on what. What's, it depends on the system that who will drop out rather than the personnel. The yeah. Celso comes in. That's a much more interesting conversation then because you know some of these players that are used to playing very often won't won't. And yeah. how do they deal with that? But then you know every club they should deal with it by wanting to play more and force their way into the team. Yeah, and I guess that last one is Ericsson. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with him because I think although he made that clear, he made a statement of like, I'd quite like to go to Real Madrid, but if it doesn't work out, I'm quite happy to be a Spurs player as well. That it feels like that will be the focus next, won't it? But there's like there's a lot of players that Real Madrid want. There's a school of thought that um, Ericsson, uh, yeah, like I said, he'll he'll either go to Real Madrid or Barcelona or he'll sign a new contract for Tottenham. Mm. Um, and there's some people saying that he's out, he's gone, he's looking for houses in New, uh, in, in Madrid already, he sold his house in London. And there's other people that are saying, uh, well, Zidane came out and uh, and it was almost like distanced himself from that, that transfer. I don't know how much more money Real Madrid can spend. They've spent a fortune already. Yeah. Financial fair play is a real thing now. I don't know if they can now afford to go and buy 89 million Christian Eriksen. But, you know, if he is and he wants to go, then fair play to him, you know, as much as any player does. You know, I don't really give a shit about him either way. But if, you know, if he was to wanting to go to Real Madrid at this stage, you'd say, all right, no, no worries. We can we'll find a way of managing without him. And it will give us more money to spend. So we've got like 90 million that we made. And, and that's, this is the thing, right? <laughs> this money that we're spending on Ndombele and potentially La Celso, this isn't like money that we've put in back into the club. This is all, this is all on the Champions League run. Right. So we've got 90 million to finish it for getting into the Champions League final. We're just spending money like the, the prize money. <laughs> Levy's still not spending a penny, really. <laughs> he's a slippery little he's Lenny. A, he's a clever one, isn't he? <laughs> I just, what my favourite thing so far in the summer has been like this, when it became apparent that Ndobli is highly likely to join Tottenham, just going onto Twitter and listening to all the Man United fans 
going, I, I can't believe he's signing for Spurs rather than coming yeah. to us. I, I'd love to have seen Sam's little face. And Tam, Tam <laughs> is, uh, those who don't know, he's a Man United fan in the Bull Street office. He's like, How, when did this happen? <laughs> and, what's that? and I was like, I, I can explain it to you. And he didn't speak again for four days. Yeah. And do you, the thing with Dembele as well with Man United, you feel like if Man United were going to buy him, you put 20 million on top of this. It's like, that's what I find mad about this, this transfer. It almost feels cheap. Yeah, I don't know, mate. It's cheap yeah. if it works out. If yeah. it don't work out, then this is a waste of money, isn't it? Yes. Uh, I think, well, it's interesting that, he, that reports have suggested that he turned down Man United and... and well, you... I read one saying that they were, they were ready to hijack it as well. So be careful. It was on the free, football three six five. The Man United are ready to hijack the deal, but I don't know. I don't know. As far as we know, the the, the terms have been agreed. There's just minor stuff that they have to go through with Ndombele. He's been to the ground. I could, it would be an utter disaster if it was to fall through. Uh, then then I could actually believe Typically the phrase first. hijack as well, which I don't really believe in anymore. I don't think Trevor's get I've hijacked been, anymore. Given Tanvir and Sam so much shit that if he goes to Man United now, I'm turning my phone off. Okay, uh, so let us know your thoughts on, on Dembele. What do you think of him? Obviously, it looks like it's going to go through. What does this mean for Spurs next season? Is that title on its way? Probably not. But will this improve them? Well, Possibly. What a boring way to outro. Of <laughs> course, the title's on the way. Yeah. It's on uh, his way. It's on his way. Yeah, well, he needs to win something this year. He needs to win something this year. He ain't, yeah. won, he ain't won nothing. He ain't won nothing. <laughs> he ain't won nothing. Although, without him, with the same squad, we would not have... I mean, he can, he put £90 million pounds into that football club. Who Just by getting to the Champions League final. Oh, Who else? Right, right, right. Have we yeah. finished? That's better than the trophy. Yeah, we're finished. Uh, subscribe to Ball Street. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Tro- what, what trophy? What, no, what trophy have you had? What recently? trophy have you the championship. We won the championship, mate. You don't, that's the not championship a trophy. Winners. So, see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>